an unsettling first look at the deadly shooting at Old Town Arvada. So imagine in this scene, there's probably 20 to 30 phone calls at one time going into dispatch. Police revealing new details about those chaotic moments, now confirming it was police gunfire that killed a good Samaritan. A responding Arvada officer encountered Mr. Hurley, who was holding a rifle and our officer shot him. Tonight, we are taking a deeper look at how officers prepare to make split-second life or death decisions. Those officers did exactly what they were trained and what they had to do, what they believed to stop a mass shooting. With gun ownership on the rise, it's prompting new conversations about how police should prepare to engage with armed citizens. Police need to be trained because now good guys with a gun are getting shot and killed by police. All right, first, the weather. I want you to take a look at this. Rain so heavy this afternoon, it created this whirlpool. That's in Parker, and the storms are not done with this yet. Good evening. Welcome to Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. Thanks for joining us. We want to bring in Denver 7 Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson now. If you've got outdoor plans tomorrow afternoon, you might want to have a backup in mind. <laughs> Uh, definitely this case for the weekend, both tomorrow and Sunday and even into early next week. Here's the radar over the last couple of hours. The rain continues, not so much in the way of thunderstorms. There's been a couple of flashes of lightning out there. It's mostly just a good rain. Southern part of the metro area had up to two inches of rain, northern Douglas County and southeastern sections of Aurora this evening. Now, still some moderate rainfall across the northwestern part of the metro area and all the way up into Weld County and Larimer County. Back into the mountains, the showers continue and across the state as this cold front slides southward. What it means for the weekend is cool, wet, unsettled conditions all weekend long which is actually a good thing because of the fire danger, the smoke we've had in our skies. This is a benefit, even though it comes on the first full weekend of summer. Thank you, Mike. Chilling new video from Arvada police shows the moments leading up to Officer Gordon Beasley's death and Monday shooting. We see a truck pull up and the suspected shooter step out with a gun. He runs up behind Officer Beasley. Police say he then yelled something at him. And then just as Beasley turns around or begins to turn around, the shooter fires. Police say Beasley barely had a chance to react, let alone reach for his own gun. That video is just one of many details police added to the complex picture of Monday's chaotic attack. Denver 7 Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski has been digging up details all week, and tonight he breaks down what we know so far about how all that unfolded. Informed sources telling us there has been significant tension between the Jeffco DA's office and the Arvada Police Department on decisions to release details of Monday's shooting. Late in the afternoon, Arvada PD released a comprehensive and extremely transparent timeline of details from before and after the shooting. Let's start now with the timeline before the shooting. 12.49 p.m. on Monday. The suspect's brother calls asking for a welfare check because his brother was going to, quote, do something crazy. 1.08 p.m., Officer Beasley and another Arvada police officer attempted to contact the suspect at his residence to check his welfare as requested. They are unable to make contact with him and clear from the call for service at 1.18 p.m. Again, this all coming from Arvada PD. 1.17 p.m. Dispatch receives a suspicious person's call in Old Town Square. Now 1.30 p.m. Monday, Officer Beasley is dispatched to the suspicious person call, arriving at the Old Town Square at 1.31 p.m. Now this video, disturbing and difficult to watch, but it tells the story. Officer Beasley parked on Webster Street and walked through an alley towards the Old Town Square. As Officer Beasley walked westbound, the suspect pulled into the area in a truck and parked behind him. The suspect got out of his truck with a 12-gauge semi-automatic shotgun, ran after Officer Beasley and yelled at him. Officer Beasley stopped, turned, and immediately was shot twice by the suspect. Officer Beasley did not reach for his gun and takes no defensive action in this video. He simply turns in response to the suspect who then shoots and kills him. The suspect then shot out the windows of patrol cars parked in the area and into the air. Police also telling us the suspect ran back to his truck 
and retrieved an AR-15 rifle. Now here's the part where police confirm an officer did shoot Good Samaritan Hurley, as we reported earlier in the week. The suspect ran back towards the Old Town Square with a long gun where he was confronted by Mr. Hurley. Mr. Hurley then shot the suspect with a handgun. A responding Arvada police officer then encountered Mr. Hurley, who was holding the suspect's AR-15. Think about those optics. The officer then shot him. Now here are details from the shooter's document that was also found at that location. Further investigation revealed the following. Arvada PD investigators recovered a document written by the suspect which contained the following statements. My goal today is to kill Arvada PD officers. Also, today I will kill as many Arvada officers as possibly can. And I just hope I don't die without killing any of, and you can read the rest. Now the statement from Arvada PD concluded, and this was powerful. Finally, it is clear that the suspect bears responsibility for this tragic sequence of events. Now many questions were answered, but the investigations will continue into the shooting of Samaritan Hurley and the Jeffco DA will ultimately decide if that shooting was justified. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. Shannon. All right, Tony. And today, for the first time, we heard from the family of Johnny Hurley. Family members describe him as a wonderful person. And in a statement released to the DA's office, the family said, quote, We are deeply moved by the outpouring of love from the community and are grateful for the support of the Arvada Police Department and their partners. It goes on to say, we don't yet have all the information about ha what happened to Johnny. And we look forward to learning the outcome of a thorough an independent investigation. It could take weeks to get the results of an independent investigation into officers' actions from Monday's shooting. What we do know is that police responded to a hectic scene with one officer already down. Well, Denver 7 CB Cotton takes a deeper look into how police train to respond to these active shooter situations and the difficult split second decisions they're forced to make. Tragedy has a way of seeping into a place. The memorials, hugs, and newly posted signs are reminders that the scars of a shooting take time to fade. Those who've witnessed them elsewhere know this too. All the information that was coming in from dispatch from hundreds of callers and do all the tactical commands at the same time. So we shared that duty as we were moving through Columbine. Grant Whitus served with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office for 26 years and was a SWAT team leader. He also responded to the Columbine tragedy and remembers the chaos of that day. Literally, there was so many hundreds and hundreds of phone calls coming in. He believes there was similar chaos during the Arvada situation that ended with Good Samaritan Johnny Hurley being shot and killed. Arvada police confirming the details on Friday. And unfortunately, you know, the hero, Mr. Hurley, lost his life in this tragic accident. Uh, but those officers did exactly what they were trained and what they had to do. What they believed to stop a mass shooting. Whitus says when officers respond to an active shooter situation, they're trained to engage immediately with the person holding the weapon as described by dispatch. In this case, it's not clear what description was given to arriving officers. Uh, we teach them if you're 100 percent positive on who you need to engage in, don't allow them to take another shot because you or somebody else is going to be shot. If you allow them that time, take that shot immediately. That's what these officers have been trained to do. Whitus says Hurley died a hero. And here's what he encourages others with a concealed carry permit to take away. I see a mass shooting. Um, you know, I certainly engage the guy just like he did. Uh, take the shooter out. The minute I believe the scenario is safe to get my weapon down, get my hands up, and law enforcement's coming. Police told Denver 7 Hurley was still holding the suspect's gun when officers arrived. CB Cotton, Denver 7. And there are many examples of how people with guns complicate the scene for police who are responding to a crime. In fact, in 2018, an Aurora police officer shot and killed a 73 year old man who was protecting his family from an invader in his own home. Richard Black was fatally shot by police who were responding to reports of a violent break in at the home. When police arrived, they heard gunshots inside. Now, what they did not know was that those shots were Mr. Black shooting and killing the intruder who was attacking his family. Police shot and killed the man they saw inside who had a gun. That was Richard Black. Well, today I spoke with the attorney who represented Mr. Black's family about the potential for confusion when police arrive and guns are present. Police officers need to be trained 
on how to work with or deal with a armed citizenry. And that is something that police officers uh, time and time again, we're seeing situations where the wrong person is being shot. And the Aurora police officer in that case was ultimately found justified in that shooting. It was very emotional to hear his name mentioned on the Senate floor. The mom of a murdered 10 year old campaigning for change in Colorado. There are a lot of ties out there um, and it's it's just it's heart wrenching. The search for justice taking Jane Tesserero to the state capitol backing new measures to keep families safe. For his name to be remembered in this way, I'm happy to see that.